In this video, we're going to look at how to change between mixed numbers and improper fractions. And so we simply begin by recalling what we actually mean by a mixed number versus an improper fraction. A mixed number is very much as it sounds. It's a number that's made up of two different types of numbers. It's made up of an integer, that's a whole number, and a proper fraction. In a proper fraction, the numerator, the value on top of the fraction, will be less than the denominator, the value on the bottom of the fraction. And that definition leads us quite nicely into the definition of an improper fraction. With an improper fraction, like 17 fifths, the numerator, the number at the top, will be greater than the denominator. 17 is greater than 5. We're going to be using a few resources from this lesson pack. It's entitled Converting Between Improper Fractions and Mixed Numbers. So it's worth making sure you've downloaded these. To begin with, we're going to remind ourselves how we can represent fractions pictorially. We'll do this first one together. We're going to represent one quarter in a diagram. Now, of course, there are a number of ways we could do this. We could use a rectangle split into four equally sized blocks. And since we're interested in representing one quarter on this diagram, we're going to shade one of these blocks. And we can now see that one quarter of the diagram is shaded. Alternatively, we could represent this using a circular shape. Once again, as long as we split it into four equally sized parts, we can quite easily represent the quarters. Again, we want one quarter, so we'll shade one part. So now we've done the first one together, I'd like you to take some time and have a go at representing the remaining fractions in diagram form. You'll need to pause the video, and I wouldn't spend more than about four or five minutes on this task. So hopefully you've had enough time to represent these in diagram form. Let's see what they might have looked like. We could have used a rectangle to represent two thirds as shown. Four fifths might look a little something like this. And then we continue in this manner. And notice it really doesn't matter which shape we choose as long as we split it into equally sized pieces. We'll now look at three over two or three halves. Let's use a circle for this one. If we take one whole, we know that if we split it into halves, we're going to get exactly two equally sized pieces. To be able to shade three halves, we're going to need to add another hole and shade one more. So now that we know how to represent fractions in diagram form, let's look at how this final example can help us to derive some techniques for converting between improper fractions and mixed numbers. In our final example, we saw that 3 over 2 could be represented as 3 halves, but we needed to include more than one circle. And we also saw that since two halves make a whole, this is the same as one whole and one half. And so we can actually say that 3 over 2 is equal to 1 and a half. Let's do something similar for 15 over 4, or 15 quarters. One whole contains four quarters, and actually we need 15 quarters, so we're certainly going to need to draw more than one circle here. So we're going to draw four circles in total, and we're going to now shade 15 quarters. We have one, two, three, four in our first circle, five, six, seven, eight for two circles, nine, 10, 11, 12, and then we need a few more, 13, 14, and 15. And now if we look carefully, we see we have one hole here, another hole here, and another hole. And then we have three quarters left over. And so we can say that 15 quarters must be the same as three and three quarters. Now you're going to have a go. Hopefully you've already downloaded this pack, but if you haven't, download it now and work through the first section on the sheet entitled Colouring Fractions. That looks like this. You'll notice that after question four, there's the opportunity to convert these without drawing diagrams. And so you're going to need to see if you can spot any patterns. Pause the video now and give yourself five or six minutes to work through this. Welcome back, hopefully you've worked through these. And you should have found that the solutions to the first four were four and two thirds, three and a half, 
three and three fifths and four and three quarters. The solutions to question five were two and five sixths, seven and a half, three and two thirds, and two and seven tenths. Did you spot the technique? Well, let's have a look and see what's happening with 14 thirds and see if we can establish one. The integer part of this solution came from seeing how many holes we could make from 14 thirds. An alternative way to do this is to ask ourselves, well, how many threes make 14? What's 14 divided by three? 14 divided by three is four with a remainder of two. And so we're going to get four whole parts and the integer part must be four. But we have two left over. These are two thirds. And so the two forms the numerator to the fractional part of this answer. Notice that since we split it in two thirds in the first place, our denominator is still thirds in our answer. And in fact, the denominators never change when converting between improper fractions and mixed numbers. Let's generalize this. We say that to convert an improper fraction into a mixed number, we divide the numerator by the denominator. The whole number answer gives us the integer part, and then the remainder becomes the numerator of the fractional part of our mixed number. For example, let's change 21 fifths into a mixed number. We're going to divide the numerator, that's 21, by the denominator, which is five. 21 divided by five is four with a remainder of one. And so this means we can make four holes out of 21 fifths, but we have one left over. We have one fifth left over. Remember, the denominator part remains unchanged. And so we can say that 21 fifths must be equal to four and one fifth. And so why don't you pause the video now and just practice converting 20 thirds into a mixed number? Let's check our answers. So we do 20, the numerator, divided by the denominator, 3. 20 divided by 3 is 6 with a remainder of 2. So 6 forms the integer part of our answer, and 2 is the leftover part. That forms the numerator to the fractional bit. The denominator remains unchanged, so it's still 3. And 20 thirds is therefore equal to 6 and 2 thirds. So now we're confident with this, we're going to look at how we can reverse the process. Let's take two and one fifth. Let's imagine we were going to draw a diagram to represent this. We might begin by taking one whole and splitting it into five parts. But of course, the integer part of our number is two, so we need two of these. So here are our two holes, but we have one more fifth left over. And so we add another section. We then know that we can represent two and one fifths by shading every single fifth in the first two and then one more in the third. Now, if we count this, we have five in the first, five in the second, and one in the last, giving us a total of 11. And of course, these are still fifths. So we see that two and one fifth must be equal to 11 fifths. Now that we've completed one of these together, you're going to have a go yourselves. You're going to go back to that earlier sheet we looked at. This time you're going to use the other side, discovering mixed numbers. Pause the video and use each of the diagrams to help you convert from mixed numbers to improper fractions. And once you've done the first few, hopefully you'll be able to find a general technique that will allow you to do this without using diagrams. Give yourself five or six minutes. Let's have a look at the solutions to this one. Question one was nine over two or nine halves. Question two was 15 sevenths and question three was 12 fifths. Hopefully you found a diagram for question four or you may have gone straight into the conversion. Either way, you should have found that two and three quarters was equal to 11 quarters. Then finally, the answers to five were seven sixths, 14 thirds, 59 eighths and 39 tenths. But of course, we want to find a general technique. We don't want to be drawing diagrams out every time. So let's go back to question one, four and a half. We know that each whole contains two halves. So we had one set of two, another set of two, a third set of two, and then a fourth set of two. Now a quicker sum we could have done would have been four times two, which is equal to eight. 
but this was four and one half. So we had another one. We had to add that on to the eight to give us nine. These are still halves, so we have nine over two. And so let's look at the general technique. To convert a mixed number into an improper fraction, we multiply the whole number, the integer part, by the denominator of the fraction. We then add this value to the numerator, and this becomes the new numerator, the numerator to our improper fraction. So let's, for example, take 3 and 4 sevenths. We're going to multiply the integer part by the denominator of our fraction. That's 3 times 7, which is equal to 21. That essentially tells us that three wholes contain 21 sevenths. Next, we take this value and we add it to the numerator part of our fraction. So that's 21 plus 4, which is equal to 25. That tells us then that we have 25 sevenths. The denominator part, as always, remains unchanged. And so 3 and 4 sevenths is equal to 25 sevenths. So before we move on, I'd like you just to pause the video and have a go at converting 2 and 3 fifths into an improper fraction. So you should have done 2 multiplied by 5. That's the integer, the whole number part, multiplied by 5, the denominator, and that's equal to 10. Then you take this 10 and you add it to the numerator part. So that's 3, and 10 plus 3 is 13. So 13 forms the numerator of our new fraction, but the denominator 5 remains unchanged. And we see that 2 and 3 fifths is equal to 13 fifths. OK, so now it's your turn to have a go. There's a worksheet in this pack called Converting Between Mixed Numbers and Improper Fractions. The first side looks like this, and the second side looks like this. When you're done, don't forget to mark your work. The answers are included in the pack. OK, so hopefully you've worked through that worksheet and checked your answers. And that's really it for this lesson. But you might wish to spend some time colouring, in which case you can have a go at the improper fractions colouring sheet from this resource here. It's called Simplifying Fractions and Improper Fractions Colour by Number, and the links are included with this video. Enjoy, and hopefully we'll see you back here soon.